definitely had some somewhat of a bowel interruption, not too bad, in the last 24 hours. And I think, have I encountered any negative energy? And I have. There was that one guy stalking me yesterday, just driving by, but I could just feel a really bad energy. So there, it just goes to show. Huh. I didn't get a headache, though. And he tends to be a man who I know suffers from digestive issues. So that's fascinating. I'm heading along. But I think, you know, experimenting on different locations and... If I have anything in my body at a muscular level, at some point I can have digestive issues as well. It could just be a natural course of my body's dealing with pain and whatnot. I was also thinking about that alone in Australia. I was talking to my mom about it and I said, you know, something else that's really striking, which is very white that I know that I didn't notice it. Um, and in itself, like all these contestants, you know, living uh, in nature without virtually anything to see who can survive the longest. They're not allowed to actually buddy up. They're not allowed to team up. They're not allowed to come together and function as a tribe. And which is totally against like the reality of any normal situation on the earth. Like how humans have survived are by working together like a family. And yet, you know, you watch all kinds of TV shows where people come together and work together to kill or kill people who kill other people. And now suddenly here's a real life situation and you have to be alone. Just like a white family, everyone, and you watch it, you don't even think of it, has to be alone and survive all by themselves, right? Like, just like two or three kilometers away from the next guy who's like, you know, a kilometer or two away from the next guy. And it's like, isn't that weird? You know, and they don't get to interact. That is so, like, that's torture. I like this video. I mean, that's torture. They're being tortured. Like I said, like so many things that we do as white people are like torture. Working out, ripping muscle, right? Living more in a more austere manner, but looking like the heroic level they go to look like I can live by myself and I don't need to work with other people, you know? And suddenly it's okay. They're not serial killers. <laughs> it's like, it's like we tell you to be alone and then we punish you for being alone. We tell you to be alone and to punish yourself and punish yourself by being alone if you have to, you know, do everything in the most punishing possible way. Like, of course they're leaving one by one. They don't get to work with each other. That would be like the whole point. It's, it's so weird. It's perverted. You know, catch food, share food, you know, keep up each other's morale. A couple people can keep the fire in the shelter. Their ass can go hunting. You know, it's like, it's like, and it, that way everyone has company all day long. You know, everything's easier when you buddy up. People can go off by themselves or not. You can get to know the land. You can share stories, information, wisdom, intelligence. You know, everything's easier. So, I don't know. I'm going to keep watching it, you know. But, uh, form my own conclusions. We were here yesterday. It was kind of like a switchover point. I come out of this forest, go down here, go down the road, head to the estuary, one of my favorite forests down there. Plus last night to eat, I think I only had like uh, a little cheese pizza, some french fries, and a big bowl of rice and fried rice and chicken. So I didn't really have a huge amount of food or protein. So I said, I'm all good. But yeah, I felt a little sinned out yesterday and then, you know, and then today I feel better. But I needed some food. Oh, that's right. Yesterday, that's when they had that burrito in the morning. That's right. At that restaurant, I had that fucking burrito. That did not come out very good as it happens. <laughs> Seriously, yeah, yeah, it didn't come out very good. So this goes to show, like, the my overall impression of going to this restaurant for the first time in years, this coffee shop, is, like, my body didn't like it. Didn't feel safe. Didn't feel comfortable really eating there. I, you know, but I did. It was like a, it didn't feel, it's like, I don't know, some restaurants, any restaurants, they just don't feel, make you give you a comfortable atmosphere. You know, I didn't feel, I don't think I'd go back there, but... You know, it's good enough for most of the people who live here, I guess. And then there was that guy in the morning driving by me, so it's like, yeah, I don't like spending a lot of time around these towns. But I'm okay. My body's okay. No injuries. God, 
see the leaves. You see how the leaves help you, right? You're going down here, the leaves help you. This one white man, miles north of here, right? Similar situation, right? And he'd moved to the area, you know, those, they had a little pug dog or whatever. They named him Ruby or something. And he insisted on raking all the leaves up one day. He's like, look at that, I raked it all for you, you know? You know, so it's a lot safer, you know, it's like, who the fuck rakes the trail? And of course I slipped and landed on my ass on the way down because there's no fucking leaves. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> no, I wasn't really angry. He was a nice guy, but and he needed something to do, and that's fun. And you live there, and I get it, right? Who doesn't want to spend the day with leaves? And that's what white people do when they want to hang out with leaves. They rake them. You know, it's like you know they have to torture themselves just to get close to nature. <laughs> it's like, why don't you just roll around in them like a regular animal? Like they're fucking amazing. If I had children and there's leaves, I was like, hey, let's, let's rake them up and then just scatter them around again. Like, we're the wind and the trees, except we're a man. And we're meant to just scatter leaves over the earth. <laughs> you know, it's like, you can do anything you want with them. You know? Oh, no, you got to rake them and put them in plastic bags and stick them in the landfill. It's like, oh, yeah. Like, who rakes the leaves out here, motherfucker? There should be, like, you know, 100 feet full of detritus. <laughs> you know, what do you tell your children happens in the forest? Like, the leaves are suffocating the earth. <laughs> oh, look at that. That guy's standing in the pigeon there. What a beautiful totem pole. I love it. I love it. I love trees. You know, children can feel them. You can feel them, but you just don't have the mind to think about what you're feeling. We feel the beauty of nature. Of course we do. We all do. We feel it. We smell it. It doesn't have to be complicated. It's leaves, it's rain, it's snow, it's <coughs> Christmas Eve. It's, we have a, a way of feeling things. Children are of the heart, you know? We feel everything. And they don't have to suffer because they don't, you know, they shouldn't have to feel things they don't like too much and they shouldn't have to worry too much about, you know, what else there is besides what a child considers the universe of their own feeling, right? You protect that as long as you can. Protect that as long as you can Like a forest The forest of man Protect this as long as you can 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 Yeah So why rake the leaves? <laughs> why? Why, dude? I want to say, like, why would you do that? It's like, just think about what you're doing like, think about how he saw his labor in terms of that force. Like, is he going to do it every year? Did I ever see him again? It was just something to do while he was there because that's the best way he knew how to relate to the environment. Right? Make himself a job to do. So, of course, like, like a retard, I, I let him do it. Well, I mean, why, why wouldn't I? It's his land too, right? And, uh, you know, and I would never question, you know, that kind of thing. But it's like, it really didn't, wasn't helpful to me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, before I go in and when I see leaves, I'm like, thank God, nobody raked the leaves. <laughs> you know, it's like, Jesus Christ, there are certain hills, like, it's a muddy, wet world, and you want those leaves, man, they're like a break. <sighs> I like the lubricant in God's mouth that prevents him from saying things that he can't take in. Some words when spoken. Can't be taken back. Walks on his own. The thoughts he can't help thinking. The tortures replete. And the world's all shit that's stinking. <laughs> Caught a bolt of muslin. Wrapped his money. Up and go. Oh. Oh. He's the walking man. Walking man. Walking man. Talking away as fast as he can. <laughs> he talked and talked all about his mother and places he went. Where he felt real sad. His hatred for white people grew and grew 
like a mushroom cloud made of man. He saw the world full of torture and people whose torture meant naught. And other people whose torture they could turn into money and offer to God. <laughs> and it was pretty much the same. But it gave them all something to do with their day. And so he decided to go for a walk. <laughs> and along the way, because he thought the earth was flat, and he got his first cell phone, he decided he would give this YouTube thing a shot. <laughs> and that began, well, the YouTube channel that you're listening to. And you're like, what? <laughs> and I'm like, I can fart any time, and there's nothing you can do about it. I'm in control here. <laughs> <laughs> or, no one's in control, and there's just a fear-ridden gambit for the merest of pleasures before the tremendous nature of life or death finally snuffs us out. What do you say? <laughs> Keep your head up. <laughs> It'll all be over soon. Keep your head up, moving on. Hold your head up, moving on. Keep your head up, moving on. Hold your head up. Ding, 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 ding. Ba da ba da ba 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 do ba do ba 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 do ba do. Sweet dreams were made of leaves. I traveled the earth from the seven seas. Everybody's looking for something. Some of them want to hurt you. Dun, dun, dun. Some of them want to get hurt by you. Dun, dun, dun. Some of them want to abuse you. Bum, 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 bum. Some of them want to be abused. Bum, bum, bum. What is this song? Oh, I was listening to on the radio on my dad's red Ford F-150. And I would turn that shit up, I tell you. Sweet dreams. I had no idea. I didn't have the cognition or the education to get me thinking about the lyrics and what the fuck they were talking about and how universally accurate they would seem to be. <laughs> There's nothing in the Bible that accurate. But I don't think Christians should be too dismayed because I think it's accomplishing the same thing. Da -na -na -na. This is what God made with Adam and Eve. Oh, oh. Because all the joy in the water wheels of the heaven passes down to the cross and turns your shit to leather. And it turns God's mind into money. <laughs> Hold your head up, working on. Pay your taxes, moving on. Convert your flesh to money. And give your children a chance to make up for the loss that they'll lose. The love that they'll lose. Because you need to abuse them to convert your life into money. And teach them to do the same thing. Real quick like, you hear? So that Uncle Sam doesn't need you anymore. And the war will end when we've incorporated it into every fucking day of our lives. Good night, honey. I'll tell you some more stories tomorrow. <laughs> um, uh, excuse me, can I talk to you, Rain? I don't think you should tell our children those stories. Why? It's going to help their brain function. They need to learn to live in the world, don't they? <laughs> Reality. I don't think it's appropriate for a child. And I don't think even your YouTube viewers think it's appropriate for them. <laughs> well... I mean, did I get to decide what was appropriate for me as a child? Look, we're not going to talk about your childhood again, Ring. You're not talking to our children that way. Are you? Are you taking authority over me? I am a useless waif who talks all day to himself on YouTube. Beat that. <laughs> yes, well, I think you did it for me, my love. <laughs> I did? Yes, you did. For a smart man, you really are stupid. Don't call me stupid. Only I can call myself stupid. You just did. No, I didn't. Yes, I did. I guess I just did. 
You're right. You're always right. I wish I knew more sentences or songs that had the word Potemkin. I love that movie, The Battleship Potemkin. Potemkin. It makes you want to learn Russian. It's like, hello there, Alexandria. Alada balada Potemkin. Alada balada balada Potemkin. It's like, that's not the Russian. Alada balada Potemkin? That still is not the Russian. I will teach you about the women of the vessel. The women vessel. The, the women of the vessel. The vessel women. You're going to teach me about the vessel women? Yes, I will. The vessel women. The women vessel. Get it right. Get your consonants right, you, you stupid bastard. <laughs> <laughs> I sold my soul for a handful of vessels to some, some vessels to some women in the Garden of Eden. The Garden of Eden. The Garden of Vegan? If only, if only they were vegan. What if Adam and Eve were tweakers? <laughs> it turns out that we all come from tweakers. And the only surviving child of the tweakers that murdered his brother while he was tweak while he was tweaking. <laughs> you know? And then next thing you know, you got a few guys keeping sheep at night, abandon their flock so they can go and find some child that somebody told them is being born in a faraway land full of a whole bunch of random people. But apparently this one's important. <gasps> Because he's more important than Santa Claus. Who looks a little bit like a wise man, right? I wonder if his wife is actually a wise man. And they're just two wise men living in the North Pole. Summer Hold your head up, move on. Keep your head up, move on. Hold your head up, move on. Keep that car going by me is kind of weirdly slow. Oh, okay. Well, this is a good part of the day. I'm going to find my little seat there. I'll probably turn this off for a few minutes. And uh, <clears throat> I should be quite well ensconced by the river the next time you see me. You know, I, you know, if none of these people lived here, I'd probably explore these little forests, you know? You know? That's what I would do if the whole world was truly in Eden. Just walk around all day, smoke weed, and talk to myself. Sounds pretty good. Well, I mean, my family has battle fatigue. What can I say? Who knew that the war that must be won is the whore that must be paid? But only by going to outer space. It's weird, I watched a show when I was young called Star Blazers, where basically a woman who could talk telepathically to the Earth apparently couldn't send blueprints telepathically to make a machine that she knew the Earth needed to make if it was going to save itself from environmental destruction. So, of course, everyone has to go into outer space, right, to go and collect this machine, or at least the knowledge they need to make it. Isn't that weird? I'm not sure if they ever got the machine, to be honest with you. I don't think if they ever made a final Star Blazers. You know? I never thought about that. It never occurred to me. I guess the purpose didn't really matter. <laughs> she was a cool chick on another planet, and she got me into outer space. I said, why do you have to go to outer space, you know, to save the planet? Whew, that's crazy, man. You know? It goes from a ship that's built to float in the water somehow manages to be in outer space. And why is star blazers? Like, what's so blazing? The only thing that really blazes is when they're killing people using their giant anal cannon and doing a lot of these aliens a favor because they're actually quite ugly. They look like they could be turned into the mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes. In fact, their ships look like globs of poop. You know? 
It's like you're just destroying waste products in outer space. If I wanted to do that, I could have stayed at home. <laughs> you know? Obviously, I would be a good candidate for star blazers. <laughs> and I'd be like, you're always finding ways to not work. I'm not going to work in outer space, I'll tell you that. I want a decent wage. <laughs> How can you have a decent wage when you work in the vacuum of space? You couldn't pay me enough. You know, in a way, economics is based on the vacuum of space, right? And keeping up with the novelty of life, taking the pay for borrowing any joy from, whatsoever from a giant dead body that, for all you know, abhors your entire existence, but bears somehow no resemblance to God.